Fish on! Ho ho! Yeah! Hey everyone, so we hope that you enjoyed the video feature we've done on the Chilliwack Spring Steelhead and thanks very much for leaving all the comments on our Facebook page and YouTube channel as well as sending us all the emails. We try to answer all the questions right away but a lot of times we simply can't do that because we are fishing and filming a lot of times so if you don't get an answer from us right away um, that doesn't mean we're ignoring you but we will get to your question eventually. A lot of times um, we get a lot of questions on fishing gear what kind of fishing rods and reels that we use and what fishing lure we recommend. Um, so what I think is, instead of answering the same question again and again, for this year, we will do a separate video on Gear Talk to accompany the fit for each uh, video feature that we do. So in this video, we'll take a look at all the fishing gear that we use in our Chilliwack Spring Steelhead feature. So the very first thing that we'll look at are the fishing rod and reel. When it comes to river fishing in British Columbia, a typical drift fishing rod ranges between 9 feet long up to 11 feet. Um, you you want to have a fairly long rod so you can flow fish properly. The rod that we use in this video is a Trophy XL. It's a 7 pin rod, um, 9 foot long. It's a little short um, but and it's also very light. Um, I've enjoyed using this rod for a couple of years now. Um, it's rated between 8 and 15 pounds. Very nice for cold salmon fishing. I used this for cold salmon during last fall and it just it's a fantastic rod. Um, being a fairly short person, 5'5", five five, um, I find that a shorter rod um, is more suitable for me. Um, that being said, uh, for the steel fishing, what I found is that this rod is a little too soft. Um, I even though I landed a few fish, um, I did lose quite a few fish as well. Um, a lot of times, um, the steelhead are very strong fish, um, and a lot of times the bigger ones, I had a problem with keeping them away from the fast current and just unable to bring them in. So, if as you can see in the last video, I actually lost one fish because of that. So. Personally, I would go with something slightly longer, maybe heavier, um, if possible. But uh, I just thought I really enjoy using this rod, so that's why we use it in this video. When it comes to centipede reels, um, there are many, many choices in the market. A centipede reel is basically a reel that has a one-to-one -one ratio, and um, it it's perfect for flow fishing rivers simply because you can feed the line um, in and out very smoothly so you can create that perfect drift with the float. A center pin reel requires you to control the drag with your hand so it, it definitely creates a lot more challenge when fighting a fish and um, therefore it's a lot more rewarding when you land a fish. The center pin reel that we use in this video is an Islander steel header and it's an excellent fishing reel uh, made in British Columbia uh, it comes in many different colors. Um, the one I used in the video was silver. This one here is gunmetal. Uh, you can also get green, gold, and black ones as well. So this center pin reel is excellent simply because it's so smooth. Um, as you can see, when I spin it, it spins really smoothly. And that's really advantageous when you're um, trying to drift the float. When you're feeding the line out, um, it creates that really nice uh, drift for the float. Therefore, you can catch more fish. Also on the side of the reel, as you can see, there's a clicker here. So if you put that on, it makes a really nice clicking sound. Um, you can put that on when you're fighting fish so that um, all your buddies around you know that you have a fish on. The next thing we'll look at is what mainline we should put on that reel. So if you look at this reel I was using, um, this spool is quite big. So you actually have to put some um, braided line right on the bottom just to fill it up because you don't want to put a whole bunch of motor filament on top of it. So the backing um, doesn't have to be changed uh, regularly so you can fill it up with braided backing on the bottom, you know, maybe halfway up and then you can put your main, whatever main line you want to put on. Um, I got 12 pound test maximum ultra green on here, simply that's the line I've been using for many years. Um, it, it doesn't uh, get scratch quite easily uh, from what I find. So 12 pound is adequate enough. Some people use, a lot of people use 15 which is fine as well. If you don't really want to go um, heavier than that because it's simply not necessary unless you're catching really, really big fish. Most of the Chilliwack River steelhead and cold salmon range between 5 pound and 15 pound. 
and uh, 12 pound men is um, plenty enough to handle these fish. So when it comes to terminal tackle, uh, what do you use? So for steelhead fishing, there simply are so many different kinds of um, presentation that you can use. You can use spinners, you can use jigs, um, you can use your typical um, egg presentation. Here we have some Jensen eggs, um, gooey bobs. Um, you can use natural bait, you can use uh, roll sacks, you can use roll chunks, you can use, uh, you can even use dewworms or gold shrimps or prawns or uh, krill. So you get the idea. There's so many different kinds of um, bait and presentation that you can use. Uh, what you use is really up to you. Uh, depends on how confident you are um, with that particular bait or presentation. Um, it also depends on the time of the year. So in this video we, we did was back in um, late March and early April. And like I say in the video, there were lots of salmon fry in the river. And we thought, well, let's use some um, small lures that imitate salmon fry because these still had actually feed on salmon fry uh, pretty often. Um, you can use spinners. Like here we have a weighted spinner um, that you can put under the float. Um, you can use unweighted spinners as well, which is just a blade um, connected with wires or uh, split rings and swivels onto a hook. Um, the problem with spinners that I find, I, I, I caught fish with spinners, but I don't really enjoy using them. I find that they create too much resistance on the float, and a lot of times they pull the float down. You gotta, you know, keep the pressure on and things like that, and you simply can't detect the bites too well. For me, anyways, I know some people have done very well with uh, spinners. Um, what I've been using the last little while is little. This little tiny spoon here that I mentioned in the last video, which is a, a Hildebrand um, little shaver uh, from Yakima Bay down in Washington. And this little spoon that comes in three different sizes, uh, they're very small, and uh, comes in two different colors. It comes in packages like this, so there's two spoons in each package. Um, so there's gold and nickel, and uh, it's yeah, say we, the last few times we've just been carrying a few of these in the pockets and put it on, and sure enough, it, it has been great. There's one week we I got into quite a few fish, and uh, and when they bite, they pull that float down really hard when this is at the end of the line. So one thing to note about these uh, little shavers is that so I open this one right here, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, it's, uh, it's designed mainly for trout. Um, a lot of anglers uh, fishing lakes use this for, uh, to troll for trout. So if you notice that hook comes with it, it's a long shank, um, pretty small hook that's designed more for trout. And this hook wouldn't be ideal for steelhead. So what I've, what I've been doing is taking this hook off and putting on a, um, your typical steelhead no, slash uh, octopus hook. This is a size one hook that just goes onto the end of the spoon and uh, it, it has worked perfectly. Well, except the few times that I lost the fish, but other than that, it has, it has been working great. Um, if you use this long shank small hook here, um, it does have quite a bit of flex in it and um, because it's designed for smaller fish. Uh, so you, you definitely don't want to jeopardize you know, your chance of landing that steelhead with this. So definitely switch it up um, when you get this lure. The other thing to pay attention is that the hook um, needs to be barbless. So if you have a barbed hook, uh, make sure you pinch it down before using it because in all streams or running water um, in British Columbia, uh, you have to use a barbless hook regardless for what species that you're going for. So let's talk about the floats we use in this fishery. Um, because the river is quite fast, um, the type of water that we fish for still is fairly turbulent. Um, you want to have a fairly big float. Um, so I tend to go with a float that's, uh, you know, 20 grams, 25 grams is usually enough. Some people go much bigger than that, um, but I tend to go with the smaller float. So 20, I, I find that these ones uh, plenty enough for this fishery. So what does this 20 gram mean? This just means that you need 20 grams of weight to balance this float. So the weights that we, that we use to balance these floats are simply these 
um, sliding egg shape weight. You can use pencil lead, you can use split shots, but this is just the weight that I prefer. Um, so this float is attached to the main line, and this is thread onto the main line below the float. And then at, after this uh, weight, I put on the little bead like that, and then you tie a swivel onto the end. This bead is is more of a um, uh, more of a security, so that when the weight comes down to the swivel, it doesn't damage the knot as easily. So from the other end of the swivel, you can tie on a piece of leader. A uh, leader is simply a piece of line um, that's between the weight and your hook. And that leader doesn't have to be very long. I usually go between one foot to one and a half feet. Some people go up to two or three. Um, you don't, any longer than that is not necessary. So I use Maximum Ultra Green um, 8 pound test. Um, that's pretty much what I use for, um, for coho and steel head. You might want to go heavier than that if the fish is bigger. Um, maybe that's why I lost the bigger fish. Um, so some people go up to 10. 10 pound leader, 12 pound leader. If you're using 15 pound mainline, you can go up to 12 pound leader as well. Um, again, maximum ultra green is what I use because um, it doesn't, this line doesn't get scratched as easily. You are drifting through um, lots of little boulders and gravel and sand and logs and things like that. So the line does get scratched. And make sure you check it uh, once well as well. Make sure that you don't, it's not scratched. Especially after you catch a fish, um, make sure the line isn't, hasn't been, has, doesn't have any abrasion on it from the, the teeth of the fish and things like that. The reason that we use a lighter leader than the main line is that uh, when you snag up, um, hopefully not too often, um, and hopefully only your leader will snap and, it's, and it doesn't snap on the main line. If you snap on the main line, then chances are you will lose your weight, your float, and all the other stuff. But if you snap at the leader, the only thing that, the, that you lose is what's at the end of it, which is your hook or, or maybe your little spoon right here. So the loss isn't as big. So now that you have your fishing gear, you, you, you have your fishing rod, reel, terminal tackle, so what else do you need? Well, you have all this stuff right here. You need something to carry it. Um, so usually I have my wedding jacket. I mean, you have the two pockets, which you can, you can get one of these little boxes like that, and which has lots of little compartments. You can put your hook and weights and uh, flow stoppers, swivels, and everything in here and close that. Put it in your wedding jacket pocket. Um, the other option is you can carry one of these waist pack. So this little waist pack goes around your waist and uh, it has lots of pockets that you can put your stuff in there. I usually carry this one as well just because I have my big camera that goes into the big compartment and uh, then the smaller stuff like the fishing gear floats and all that goes into the smaller one. Then you also have the side compartments like that for a water bottle and things like that. For steel fishing it is very mobile. You have to be moving all the time fishing from run to run so you want to carry something that's comfortable to you. Um, I used to use a backpack, but I find that's really hard on my shoulders. Um, so that's why I switched to the waist pack. And for the last um, few months, I've been using that. It's just been great. It's a lot less tiring at the end of the day. Um, it's definitely worth a try. The other thing that you should have uh, are a pair of waders. Um, the pair of waders um, not only keep you uh, dry and warm, and it allows you to move from one spot to the next one without having to worry about, am I going to get wet you know, by stepping in this area and things like that. And what, the one other very important point is that when you catch a fish, when you're landing the fish, and if you plan to release that fish, having a pair of weight is really important so that you can actually get into the water and land that fish properly. Keeping that fish in the water so it doesn't get damaged and do whatever you want um, with the uh, taking photos, uh, things like that, and releasing it so you can actually go back and survive. So that's it. So these are the fishing gears that we use in this Chilliwack Springs to it fishery. If you need more information, please go to our website at fishingwithrod.com and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave a comment if you have a question. So until next time, good luck fishing.